In this video series, I'm taking a look back at some of my photographs and travels over the years and sharing the stories that went into creating my artwork. Please take the time to subscribe to my channel now so that you don't miss anything. Thank you and enjoy. <laughs> Okay, so in this video I'm going to talk about my trip up to Lofoten in Norway to photograph the village of Reina. Or Reina. I apologize if I, I don't pronounce it correctly throughout the video or if I bounce between pronunciations. So anyway, back in June-July of 2014, I went to Norway to photograph up in the Lofoten Islands, which is a, a really beautiful chain of islands up above the Arctic Circle in Norway. I chose that time of year to go for a few reasons. They have uh, the midnight sun during that time of year. The sun doesn't set up in that area above the Arctic Circle, which I thought would be a really cool thing to experience. I also researched the photographs that I want to take way in advance of going to take them. Part of that research involves making sure that the sun is going to be in the right direction to get the photograph that I'm looking to get. At the time, Norwegian Airlines was running a special, they were trying to get a lot of more international travel going from North America, I guess. So they had a, this special from New York to Bergen for like a couple hundred dollars one way. So I actually just booked a one-way ticket from New York to Bergen. In the process of looking at Bergen and what there is to do in Bergen, I found that the day that I was arriving, Iron Maiden was playing at this like big open air, like castle venue right in the center of Bergen. How often do you get to see something like that? So I booked an overnight stay in Bergen the night that I arrived and bought a ticket to see Iron Maiden. <laughs> Coming from North America, at least, Norway is very expensive. Uh, lodging is expensive. I found food to be very expensive there. I get to Bergen, I get to my hotel. It was early in the morning, I couldn't check in yet, and I went to check out this fish market that they have right in town. They have this fish market right in the middle of Bergen, which is really cool to check out even if you don't eat fish. And uh, I found something really interesting there that I had never seen before anywhere they sell whale meat at this fish market. So I made sure to take a picture of that on my uh, cell phone to document that because it was something really bizarre that I don't think you can see many places in the world anymore. So I spent this overnight in Bergen, woke up early the next morning, got the bus over to the airport again, then flying from Bergen to Oslo, changing planes in Oslo, flying up to this little airport named Buda or Bodo. Again, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce that. If uh, someone wants to let me know how to pronounce that in the comments, I'd really appreciate that because it's years later now and I'm not, still not exactly sure how to pronounce that town. And then from Buda, took this little plane over to Lofoten, land at this airport in Lofoten, go to collect my bags. I always keep my camera bag on me. All my cameras go into a backpack, so I have that with me at all times. And I always try to, when I'm taking a flight, keep the tube that I keep my kites in. I try and keep that with me as carry-on luggage. That's really essential to my work, is having those kites with me, and I don't want them to get lost, especially when I'm somewhere inter international, and it would be hard for me to get those specific kites anywhere locally. So because I had to take a really small plane from Buda, they made me check my kite tube as checked luggage. So here I am waiting in Lofoten for my kites to come out and I'm just waiting and waiting and waiting and they don't come out. This was the first time in all of my travels that a piece of luggage didn't make it to where I was at the end of a flight. So I go and talk to the, the people there and they say, all right, well, uh, well, we'll call you and we'll let you know if they show up or where we find them. I try not to stress about it too much, but of course those kites are essential to the job that I'm there to do. So I go and uh, check into this really awesome rental unit that I rented for the week I was there 
They're called Roarboos. And if you watch part two of this video, I'm gonna tell you all about Roarboos. And I have a, a ridiculous story about this Roarboo that I rented when I was in Norway. So uh, you don't wanna miss that. It's actually one of my favorite all time travel stories from all of my travels. And eventually, like two days later, got a call from the airline and they're like, oh yeah, your, your kites are here at the airport in Lofoten, come pick them up. So that was a big relief. One main photograph that I went to Lofoten to get was this photo photograph of the village of Reina. Reina. Again, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it, so if you do speak Norwegian, please spell it out phonetically for me in the comments here. I'd really appreciate that. Thankfully, the, the wind was coming directly off of the Norwegian Sea. I was able to get my uh, one of my low wind kites into the air. If you watch the video that I have about all of my different kites, you'll see this one featured on that video. I'll put a link to that video in the description of this one if you want to check that out. Thankfully, I was able to lift my kite over this fjord and you know take this really awesome picture of the village of Reina from a similar location to where a lot of other photographers have taken photographs from the ground but mine obviously is different because it's from a much different perspective than you get on the ground it's uh, done really well for me and people seem to respond to it well pretty much came out exactly how I had envisioned it also next to this village in Reina, there's this hike you can do up the side of a mountain. I don't get to do a ton of tourist stuff. When I travel, I'm there to get certain photographs and I kind of obsess over that photograph and getting it or searching for other locations to photograph and, until I have something that I'm really satisfied with from a trip. So this particular day, there was not supposed to be any wind. So I decided I would do this hike slash climb up the side of this mountain out of a sense of optimism for being able to take a, a cool photograph or something, I decided I was going to bring all my camera gear and all of my kites up this mountain. So maybe at the top of the mountain, there would be some wind and I can fly one of my kites off the top of this mountain in Norway. Started hiking up. Uh, it's really steep. It was kind of wet because even though it was July, there was still some melting snow in areas. So it was kind of like muddy. Got 20 pounds in my backpack plus my kite some my shoulder. Less of a hike and more of like a vertical climb. I was totally fatigued about halfway up. I'm sweating, but it's chilly, so I'm getting cold. Getting to the top of this mountain and thinking to myself, when I get to the top of the mountain, I'm going to have to live there because I'm not gonna have the energy to climb back down. It was probably stupid to even go up and continue at this point and should have just turned around. So I get to the top of this mountain and just sitting on a rock is this like 90 year old Japanese woman who did the hike and got there. And I thought to myself, here I am like a young guy and this like 90 something year old Japanese lady is just sitting up there like it was no problem to climb up this mountain. But the hike was totally worth it. The view was just totally beautiful. It was much, much higher than I expected. A cool thing to do. I'm glad I did it. Um, and of course, at the top, there was absolutely no wind. It was just as still as could be. No reason that I should have brought my uh, kites up there. And then getting down, a lot easier than getting up. So make sure you watch part two of this uh, Norway travel series I'm doing where I talk about the Roarboo that I stayed in and another one of my photographs. This Roarboo story is one of my all-time favorite travel stories. So uh, I'm really happy to finally have a, a forum to share that in. So make sure you check that out next. And uh, again, if you don't subscribe to my channel already, please subscribe because I would really appreciate that. I'm going to be doing a lot more of these throwback travel videos uh, where I talk about photographs that I've taken in the past and the travel story that goes with it. If you have any questions or comments, please you know ask them below or leave a comment. I'd, I'd love to hear what you think about these. This is the first in the series that I'm doing, so let me know what you think of this format, if you think there's a, a better way that I could present these videos to you, um, because I, I really would like to share these stories, and uh, I'm still, I guess, trying to find the right format to put them in. So if you enjoyed this, let me know. If you think there's a place I can make an improvement, please don't hesitate, let me know. I'd love to hear it, because I wanna make these the best they can be. Thanks for watching, and uh, make sure you check out part two of this story.